Good morning! Fucking, uh, the, 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 all your transitions were crapping themselves then. Anyway, first things first, let me test the audio. Fucking, uh, the, the, there we go, we're fine. Okay, the, I was, um, I wanted to check, because there's a lot of you in from the start this morning. I want to make sure the audio works fine. It does just a little bit of a... Uh, Housekeeping before we do get into things. I am having some housework done. Forget housekeeping, housework. I'm having housework done. So if you hear banging, scratching, drilling, noising, it's absolutely not the people in my... What, what, what did we call it yesterday? The sex barn or something like that? Is that what we settled on? So it's not people in my sex barn. It's it's houseworky stuff. So yeah, apologies. But anyway, welcome in everyone. If you are here, if you are new, if you're old, whatever, welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream applause. My name is Graham and this... In the dressing gown of dreams is the man that we call Bibi. You're not. It's, it's not. The, what, what? What? I can't remember what we call you. The Italian B Bib man. Italian Batman. But this one. This one's different. This one is one that I got from my sister-in-law. Uh, it's got my name on it. I can't see because the mic's in the way. <laughs> oh. Oh, <that> hey. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Um, anyway, welcome in. My name is Graham. This is Bib. We are Ice Cream Uploads, and in true ice creamy fashion, this is The Scoop, your daily dose of news from the world of video games and beyond. And some people, us, might even say that this is the UK's number one video <laughs> game podcast. There you go. There you go. Anyway, whether it is or isn't, I mean, debatable, but, but we think it is. That's all that matters. Anyway, we're going to give you our thoughts and impressions on the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories from the world of video games like we do each and every single weekday on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. We go live, bang on the money at 10 a.m. Ish. <laughs> Ish. It's, it's 11. It's 11. It's 11. It's 11. Um, but yeah, we go live at 10 a.m. ish when everything else is out of the way. So that, there's a big ish. There's a big ish. We have an emote for it. It's fine. It's good. Anyway, if you are live here with us, please do get involved in the chat. This live stream, we turn it into a YouTube video and an audio podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. On demand content. Yeah. But you don't get to get involved right here in the chat. So if you are here, use the opportunity on behalf of everyone else watching and listening on demand a little bit later on. Before we do get into the news, and yes, we will be ranting at PS5 scalpers, as you've probably seen me doing on social media this morning. Um, <laughs> couple of things to I'll mention. I don't know. I don't know. A couple of things to mention. First of all, um, let me see if chatbot is open and running. It is. Okay, exclamation mark, insert coin. We'll give you a little bit of information about insert coin clothing. We um, are part of the insert coin stream family now, and we will be having our first stream on their channel tonight, 6 p.m. UK time. So if you're not busy, it would be hugely appreciated if you can come and uh, support us for our first stream tonight, twitch.tv forward slash official insert coin 6 p.m uk time myself and bib will be going live and playing through the first half of a way out so it's it's going to be a three hour stream the game's about six hours long the second part will be in a few weeks time so we'll have part one today part two um in yeah, march i think it is so it's about six, six weeks ish. Yeah. um so yeah march ish so you can watch the first three hours with us today it's a really good game um and because yeah. uh, everyone else has told me uh, that's that's how i know uh, everyone else has been telling me my, my twitter mentions have been crazy uh, so yes uh, we're playing a way out today on official insert coin the other thing to mention is that if you want to bag yourself some icu merch and you're a subscriber make sure you're in the discord and you have your twitch and discord accounts linked if you don't have your accounts linked you are missing out on the opportunity to win free prizes obviously that's just limited to subs as a bit of a thank you for helping support the channel but anyway that's enough for that babe should we jump into some news do you know what, Graham? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. Wait one minute. I've just seen. I've just seen Ferno say, "Is it called a house coat or a dressing gown?" Who's calling it a house coat? If you're calling it a house, surely coat. nobody in the world is calling it a house coat. Uh, you don't call it a dressing gown. It's, it's, it's absolutely a, a dressing gown. I mean, which it's a house coat. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This this is like one of those like. Like bread balm sort of things. I like. Yeah. I didn't realize until maybe last year, year before. It gets recycled all the time now, so I've seen it a million times. But the edge of bread has has different names around the country. It's always been a crust to me. Um, mm. but you get crusts on the ends of all pieces, and then on the the end pieces are just crusts. Uh, do, you want, yeah. do you want a crust? Yeah, nice. But then there's like a crust is best part of the bread. I wish I'd just bring out a loaf where it was just full of crust. Uh, being it, honest, it depends on what I want from a sandwich. I mean, some sandwiches where you just got that big soggy buttery. Blah, 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 blah. So yeah, it depends. It depends. Uh, but there's a lot of people in. There's shitloads of people in this one. Let me jump back and say a few hellos. Uh, Tito, good morning. Uh, Ferro, Jenkins, Lake, uh, Bluey Boy, King Jason. Hey, welcome in, dude. Um, Jenkins, two thousand and nine. 
Uh, I don't know why I felt the need to reference the full 2009 there. But Jenkins, welcome in, dude. Welcome in, dude. Um, Vern's here as well. Uh, Gagad, Magic Man. Ooh, a lot of people. Uh, Bateson, 87, is here. I've just been chatting to him about... Oh, yeah, um, Bateson's not streaming on his own channel. Jesus Christ. Well, speaking of part time, do you know what I mean? Yeah, honestly. We're live. God, look at you. Just there, just hanging around in Twitch chats. God damn it. <laughs> Good morning. Um Who's calling? He's calling a crust an outsider. I, I know. That's what I mean. There's, there's, there's loads of different things that absolutely blew my mind. It, for me, just a crust, and literally every conversation throughout my I don't know was a, so I must have been about thirty two ish or whatever thirty two years of life when I first had this conversation. For me, there was no other word but crust. And then I saw some <laughs> social media posters. What do you call this? And people were like, like outsiders and and like end stops or whatever probably not end stop but it was like it was that daft to me i was like it's literally just a crust what are you talking about so there you go there you go so if you didn't know there you go crusts aren't always crusts uh dressing gowns clearly aren't always dressing gowns it's a house coat as well <laughs> uh yeah, they're a different breed aren't they that's that's almost like house coat is almost like right. americanism do you know like the the michael mcintyre like sidewalk because it's where you walk and it's <laughs> on the side a waste paper basket because it's a basket where you put your paper but not any paper just your waste paper it's like house coat it's a coat that you wear but in the house <laughs> it's, it's, i mean it makes perfect sense and it makes more sense than a dressing gown it, but it's a dressing gown yeah i do you know it's that's actually true that does make more sense than a dressing gown because because why would you put on a gown <laughs> to get dressed because you've literally got dressed with a gown <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's I'm not going anywhere else. Why would I put a gown on? That, yeah, that's it. Ferno's just starting to unravel the fabric of my my sanity now. Why do I call it a dressing gown? No, <laughs> house coats are for old ladies, says Danielle. Exactly. There you go. Confirmed. Ferno is an old lady. <laughs> a sleeve towel. <laughs> <laughs> Precision with the uh, house coat. Outsiders are wedges. I didn't see the wedges bit to me. So there you go. I'm going to go downstairs, put my house coat on, and have some nice toasted outsiders. Mm, num, 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 num. <laughs> anyway, enough of the band. So let's jump into some news. So we do have uh, a topic that is, well, let's be blunt, it's pissing a lot of people off right now. See, I have the benefit of having a PS5, um, as does Bib, so we don't have to worry about trying to get one. But there's a shitload of people out there that are being jerked off by scalpers and retailers that don't care about their customers that's the simplest way to put it so we've been covering this story um on our own social media and here on the scoop for the last two three months now um anyway yesterday there was a big um influx of consoles game had a huge amount of stock John Lewis had a, a huge amount of stock. They all came, they went, websites went down. A big catastrophe, and it all kind of went to shit. Um, so let me just jump into the first news article of the day. I'll run through this, and then we can all start to pick it apart. Um, just want to shout out Marshall AVFC as well. He did share a VGC article on this, which did get updated through the day yesterday. Um, I've just remembered that now. So we are running with the Eurogamer link, but also shout out to Marshall for that. Um Tom Phillips at Eurogamer says, Game plays down scalping groups claim it snagged 2,000 PS5s in one day. Let me just stop at the title. 2,000 PS5s snagged, according to this group, just from game in one day. And you can't get one for yourself. That's fucking horrendous. Back into the article. Just keeps getting easier every time, which is the, the tagline and a quote from the scalping group. Uh, so an organised scalping group has claimed it scooped up more than 2,000 PS5 consoles from games restock today. A Twitter account belonging to the scalpers boasted it had over 2,000 checkout success, uh, checkouts successfully logged for today's game restock on the PS5 and that it just keeps getting easier every time. The Twitter account is now set to private after receiving a backlash from would-be customers left unable to buy a PS5 before stock sold out um game digital needs to do something about this one reply reads too many people who genuinely want one are being screwed out of it by this piece of scum thanks for letting bots ruin normal people getting ps5 bundles wrote another 
and there are numerous less friendly, uh, less family friendly responses. I would have probably loved to see a few of those instead of myself, to be fair, because that's how I feel. Anyway, posts from members of the scalping ring are still visible. Many include screenshots of email inboxes filled with purchase confirmations from game for multiple PS5 consoles. Some of these users have then boasted how they will soon resell these consoles for profit to people willing to pay far higher prices. Uh, PS5 consoles regularly sell for hundreds more on eBay or Facebook Marketplace and on the high street CEX still sells PS5 consoles for £815 and continues to operate, operate its in-person trading services even while the UK is in lockdown, something many of the chain's old staff have told Eurogamer they feel is unsafe. Back on Twitter, some of those who bought extra PS5 stock today attempted to explain why they had done it. I lost my full-time job due to the pandemic. I have bills to pay. To do that, I am selling a PS5, one user wrote. I have bills to pay, and this is how I currently pay them. In the pandemic, if people are fortunate enough to be able to afford a PS5, they are not in the position I am. In a statement to Eurogamer, a game spokesperson said the chain had strong measures. <laughs> Uh, to prevent scalping, uh, and cautioned that many of the claims and screenshots being shared online showed email confirmations where payment had not yet been taken. Um, here's the statement in full. Uh, so few paragraphs to bear with. Uh, PS5 continues to be in very high demand, and we de uh, and that demand far outweighs current supply, a game, uh, game spokesperson told Eurogamer. We have strong measures in place to help ensure that our one-per-customer statement is maintained to allow for as many individual customers to successfully purchase as possible. All pre-orders are subject to automatic checks, and order updates such as cancellations following these checks take place after a customer will have received a valid order confirmation email. At the present time, these orders are still pre-orders and as such, no payments have yet been taken from the customers. Payments will commence once our order checks have been completed. While it feels like game faces an uphill battle, it's worth remembering that retailers have won against scalpers in the past. Back in December, Very cancelled 1,000 Xbox Series X orders, a scalping groom had boasted about nabbing, and while these scalping groups do have success getting some consoles, it's also worth remembering why they like to have such big mouths on social media. They're constantly trying to attract new customers of their own. Both the group today and the high-profile group Eurogamer reported back on uh, at the PS5 launch in November, run as subscription services with their tools to help you jump online, uh, uh, jump online queues and circumvent purchase limits only available if you pay up first. The group behind today's scalping effort advertises its services for £60 every six months, um, but we won't be naming them here. Last month, okay, we don't need to talk about the Scottish MPs saying that they want to combat that because we all want to combat that. But a lot to take in there. The gist of it is that a shitload of scalpers... Um, intervened bagged potentially 2000 consoles yesterday although game uh, plays it down and says that they will get stung bib mm -hmm. thoughts mm. yeah i said this i said this to you yesterday uh when i was off the stream like it surely it can't well it, it the procedures that they've got in place surely it can't be that difficult to be able to find out who's buying more than one console unless their bots well i imagine their bots are well advanced but the people are sharing screenshots of their inbox, their email inbox, where they've got like 10 underneath each other. Surely that's gone to the same email address, or it's just many, many forwarding addresses that they've managed to use. But can they not filter by a little postcode, uh, the name of the person buying it, email address, uh, and address at some point? I, I, I don't know. Surely I thought it would be as easy as that. And then I also said to you, it depends on whether or not they've listed on the website that it's one per customer. If they haven't listed it anywhere on the website that the PlayStation's at point of buying them are one per customer, then that just shows the stance that they are. But ultimately, game are a business, and they're not asked where the money comes from um, as long as they end up getting the money, which is unfortunate for absolutely everybody else. But the one main part of this story that I want to, take, uh, that I want to pick apart is uh, whoever it is that's given the interview said, if people are fortunate enough to be able to afford PS5, they are not in the position that I am, comes from the person who's probably bought 10 of them. I can't afford 10 PS5s. Can you afford 10 PS5s? Nope. Nope. So I they're mean... in a much better position than what we are. Like, are they using all of their, I don't know, uh, redundancy money on this to try and invest? I, mean, I have genuinely no idea. There is the potential that. So if this person has lost, lost their job, has been made redundant, they have six months of salary sat there to see them through the next six months by gambling half of that on consoles they could double their money and get the money back so there is there is ways to do that but yeah i i i, I feel that's a bullshit 
comment. If I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, we've ripped that apart in the past. We've had people saying that they're using this to put food on the table um, in the past. And, and fair enough, you operate a business and legally you're doing nothing wrong, but ethically there are issues. However, the legally doing nothing wrong can be challenged because most people will have gone to a website and seen a queue and sat there for an hour in this queue. If you jump that queue, you are breaking the rules. You are going against the terms and conditions for the use of that website as specified on that website. You are using software to do that, to circumvent that website. That is against the rules. That is an illegal practice. Um, and yeah, you're breaking the law. So just because you're putting food on the table, where is that acceptable? Breaking the law to put food on the table. Is it fine then? Oh, I know you're a drug dealer. Oh, I know that you're trafficking arms, which can kill people, but you're feeding your family, so it's all right, I suppose. No, it, it, be, being a dick and, and breaking rules for your own gain is not acceptable. I mean, it, it gives you some, some uh, sort of logic, but logic doesn't necessarily mean it's valid, and there's, there's a big difference there. Um, that's what, uh, comment here. As in playing Devil's Advocate, which I do like a bit of Devil's Advocate, to be fair. Uh, we tend to do it quite a bit. Uh, do we definitely know their NAB 2000 from game? Nah, kind of. Um, we definitely know uh, a, a set of assholes with an ulterior motive have claimed that they've bagged 2000. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's all based on it being a claim, uh, which was in the, uh, uh, the title of the article. Game players down the scalping groups claim because their comment was over 2000s checkouts successfully logged for today's game restock. Um, so taking that as fact, but it is just a claim. Take it with a pinch, a fact, but pinch. Um, so it's not, it's not been proven uh, by any means. Um, it's easy to dunk on game for this based on the word of these scalpers who are promoting their paid for service. Hard to trust where they sometimes good to take a step back and look at, every, look at everything before dunking on something or someone. I, no, I agree. I agree. But I will take all of that back, roll it up and then throw it in the bin because this system is not good enough. The exact same conversation um, I had on social media yesterday with Eternal Lee, who's in the chat um, and with you guys in the stream, this this non-transparent system of shit this stock let's just put it live fuck it it's gone okay whoever whoever was just around gets it whoever isn't doesn't um and if you're one of those lucky few that gets on before the scalpers notify all of their people through their automated processes and they all then click in and buy shit if you're one of those lucky few people well done to you but that's it it's literally just fate chance luck there is nothing that you can do to avoid that and then once the queue starts you're in, you you're gonna lose. You are in a losing race. I posted. Let me see if I can uh, bring up my shit attempt at a meme this morning. There we go. Um, so this is my absolute world class Photoshop graphics. I know. I, I know. It was actually me that did it. You're not gonna believe it, but yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> buying a PS5 online during a pandemic. On the left side we have decent people. On the right side we have scalpers. And then I put Game Curries and John Lewis welcoming uh, welcoming them in because that is the effect. When you're sat in this queue. And you get the notification that you're 17,000 in the queue. They haven't got 17,000 consoles. You're not getting one. But you're in this queue. Uh, meanwhile, like the people right up here at the front that might be 1,500 in the queue, they might be thinking, oh, nice, I'm getting a console here. I'm only 1,500. Surely they're going to have more than that. Yeah. But, but this Mr. Scalper just strolls past the queue. And even though you're 1,500... Him and a bunch of his friends could all jump together and just snag 2,000 in 10 minutes. Mr. One and a half thousand, who's well in the limit, is gone because they're circumventing that whole system. So absolutely not dunking on game, but dunking on every single retailer that continues this system. And it won't change. As much as I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to take it far enough to campaign for change because, um, I mean, that's one, a lot of effort. And two, it's not going to change because rich... Um, Rich Liu, uh, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm making sure. I, I thought I got his name wrong then because we've got eternally. But Rich, <laughs> Rich Lee, uh, different spelling of Lee, um, who is a content creator. He buys Jordans, um, and he's been having this for a million years. People outside of technology have been dealing with this stuff forever, um, and it just works for retailers at the disadvantage of consumers. So, yeah, until that changes, this will be a thing. The only other thing, I mean, supply and demand. If we don't change the way that we get the supply or add more supply, the only way that we can influence that is to change the demand. And that's to tell people to not buy from scalpers. 
But for that to work, you have to be able to confidently say that nobody will buy a console from a scalper. I can confidently say that I know people that will buy from scalpers. And as shameful as that is, I know people that have bought from scalpers. I wouldn't, and I would never condone that. Um, but, yeah, people do that. People fund that. So supply yeah. is the only way that we can influence this because the demand will always be... Well, not always be there. It will be there for now until the supply evens it out, which is a shame. Yeah. What are your thoughts? People just want them, unfortunately. Uh, people just want them. But the thing is, like, is there, is there a way that... I mean, they're obviously playing on the fact that it is a pandemic and people can't leave the house. That's the main. That's the main gist of this. If, like, my local game at Crown Point in Denton was to have the consoles in and you could like reserve it online, I think I mentioned this last time we ended up talking about this topic. If I could go onto Games website and reserve one and then have to go and pick it up myself and a designated time slot, that would be that would be one way around it, rather than me just joining a virtual queue and then. Whatever it is, even if even if I could reserve one now, if I say if I didn't have one and I could I could pick it up in two months' time, at least I know I've got one. Then I don't have to keep on worrying about where it's going to come from or if I'm going to have to pay a stupid amount of money to be able to go and get it. But if I could just like click my local game or wherever it would be, Asda, whoever it is that's selling the console, and then I can reserve one or pay for it in full and then go and pick it up later down the line myself rather than it getting delivered. I think that would probably eliminate a lot of the different areas that people are getting. Rob from because let's be honest, people are still going out and being able to shop and stuff like that, which is an absolute necessity. But we're only allowed to leave the house for stuff like that. Can you go down and pick one up from the? It's still classed as a shop. CEX is still open for trade. Do you know what I mean? Albeit they're still selling this console at eight hundred and fifteen pounds. The robbing bastards. <laughs> uh, I'm still devastated that when I was in the shop and I seen a bloke talking to someone behind the the two people behind the counter was talking to each other looking on ebay at what the going rate was so they could try and inflate the prices of the one that they already had on the shop floor 815 pounds if i could have just taken a picture of that i would have been sound um but i couldn't um but yeah like being able to click and collect from your local store would definitely eliminate this imagine someone going in onto a website and reserving 10 of them and then having to stand outside the shop opening the boot while they put 10 in while people are there queuing for them it wouldn't go down would it that the person trying to scalp 10 of them, putting them in the back of the car while other people are there, they, they would probably get beaten up and robbed and then someone's just managed to get a free I can't remember who it was. Someone, when we spoke about this in the past, said that they remember going to a midnight launch for GTA um, and then someone got GTA and got mugged for it outside or something like that, which is absolute <laughs> irony when you're playing GTA. Um, but, yeah, ima- <laughs> imagine walking... If you get GTA stolen off you, imagine walking past with 10 ps5 consoles well <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah i mean it does surprise me that businesses like game can't operate where businesses like cex can i mean if we can have curbside collection and click and collect stuff fine for a lot of things it doesn't surprise me that uh, it surprises me that things like game don't operate that but that said maybe that's not something that would be sustainable in a brick and mortar sense because yeah. that would be a store that essentially needs gas, electricity, whatever, uh, staffing to have the doors shut and then someone delivering the consoles out. Like Obviously, a number of people did go and collect their PS5s in person from uh, stores back in November. But um, that was kind of a different thing. There was guaranteed stock. There was pre-order sale stuff anyway. Game can't necessarily open and close. Oh, shit, okay, well, we'll have someone on furlough, but you're going to come in and do this day because they don't have consistent stock for PS5, so they can't say yeah. someone will be in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday because they'll just get one stock upload for January and buff, that's it, it's gone. Okay, the next time we'll do that is kind of... So it is quite difficult for them to do that. Um, that oh, then means a shitload... It's gone, continue. Yeah. No, I was going to say, the, the way to eliminate that, though, is if game, game know how many they're going to be getting, don't they? Like, they've just sold 2,000. They knew that they had 2,000. They didn't oversell it. They didn't undersell it. They knew that they had that. So each store could probably, if they, if they needed to, reserve 25 to 30 consoles per store around the UK, or at least the city, uh, maybe the, the in-town one, so people don't have to go to the city centre. Because I know there's a game in, like, the Trafford Centre, and I know there's a game inside the Arndale Centre. They're two places that are probably going to be closed and you shouldn't be going anyway. But my, my, my local town one is right next to a Morrison's. Um, so if, if I knew that I could reserve Thank one, if cream. I was one of the lucky 30 people that could have potentially had one, that then eliminates that kind of, doesn't it? Like the store knows that they can ha- they can invest in 30 of them. That local store then puts them 
on there, Hold you can be one of the 30 cream. people to go on and try and invest them. But the chance of getting what getting 30 is probably a lot a lot more than trying to 100,000 people trying to reserve 2,000. The issues, though, that you have is a couple of things. First of all, game digital and game retail are two different businesses. Um, so game digital selling something and you picking that up from game retail um, is one kind of thing. But but how do you split that stock online? Um, how do you sell to just be? I mean, not saying that that's not that's impossible and they can't do it. But with the current systems, it probably is impossible. Which comes back full circle to the the current systems are not good enough. Um, and <laughs> the current systems weren't designed for a pandemic environment. None of them. So game AO dot com, which is currently. Uh, um, having uh, their uh, currently right now their website is paused on PS5 orders because they want to verify sales that are going through. Um, very John Lewis. None of them have, have, have built sites this, that are yeah. built for this. Lee, Mr. Eternal Lee, thank you very much for the tier one. So Precision, thank you very hey, much for the host. Inferno, I appreciate the host as well. Very much appreciate, it, boys. Um, That's my shaggers. Yeah, none of these websites were built with this in mind. Nobody could have accounted mm -hmm. for a pandemic. But that excuse does only go so far when this is a problem that has long uh, been bigger than a pandemic. What we sh what this should be doing, though, should be inspiring these websites to think of better systems. And until someone someone takes the leap uh, and, and puts the customers first, businesses aren't going to do that. Um, so if game sells all of their stock, having having. A huge demand for a little supply is wonderful for game. I mean, the, the, the customer angriness, okay, that's what not what they want. But if you've still got 60,000 customers that are willing to take the place of every angry customer in the future, game will like, okay, well, that's fine by me. I will sell these consoles. Yeah. But you, what you need is a, is, is a retailer with a conscience that says, do you know what? It's not, it's not nice. If we've got 2,000 consoles, but 200,000 people uh, trying to log on, that's 99% of people are going to be let down. What retailer in in any world would be happy with 99% of their potential consumers being pissed off? 99% of your audience being let down is a bad system. It's simple. That's a, it's, it, it's a horrendous system, and it needs to be fixed. The only way that that would fix is someone to go forward, put themselves out, create a system. And that, like I said before, I don't know what that is. That could include ballot elements. That could include early sign-ups. That could be... Who was it you bought your console from, Asim? You bought... like what Was that was that Curry's? I think that was Curry's, where, where they took like a, a five a deposit or a £100 deposit or whatever it was and gave you like a £1,000 ticket and put the price yeah. of the consoles up. Genius, genius. But it needs people to do that kind of stuff all the time. If that stuff happens... Um, and becomes the norm, then then the retailers that don't do it and just have these stupid chance it if you want cues, they will just yeah. go extinct because that is archaic. Because it's acceptable now doesn't necessarily mean it's what the future should be. Um, and yeah, that's my point in it all. It's a crap system for everyone, for the retailers, for us. It's not perfect. But nobody seems to be learning on, okay, it's not perfect, but how could we make it be a little bit more perfect? And I think, yeah, I think... That's my issue. I mean, I'd probably be a bit more pissed if I didn't have one already. Um, but I have one already. I just, I would like one for convenience. I want one upstairs and downstairs. So the PS4 Pro that I have here in the studio set up could be a PS5 digital. I've got my, my disc one downstairs. I would like a digital one here. Jobs are good. And, um, mm -hmm. Don't need it. So I'm not, not pissed. But some people are fuming, gutted, spent years waiting for it and then spent months chasing it. They just weren't live at 11 o'clock at night when game went live after their um, Gamescom conference and got one like I did. Um, yeah, pre-ordered it three months in advance and had to sit there going, oh, I'm not sure if it's going to arrive, but it did. It did, it yeah. came here. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sick in the booting game. They sorted me out. So, I don't, I don't want to just single them out and attack them. This article is based on that specific case study, but extrapolate Say the same for John Lewis. Their website was an absolute disaster yesterday. Say the same for Curry's. Their website was a disaster this morning. And all these... Curry's is... Was it Curry's? Um, I don't know if some responded. If it was Curry's, they've done this right before. Why can't they do it right now? It's just the... Uh, oh, fuck. Well, game just threw their consoles out and got away with it. So we'll do it as well. But yeah, anyway. Whew. Uh, let's it's jump... the same as tickets. So they end up buying hundreds of tickets and then can't get rid of them outside of the 
outside of the stadium ground, whatever it'll be where the concert's going on, and then s- trying to sell the tickets at ten pound. They may have made a chunk before that, so like getting rid of the ticket is their main priority at that point. They're not really bothered if they take a loss on it, but like two hours before the concert is starting, if the ticket face value was thirty pound, they'll be selling it for fifty because I know people will be desperate to get in. If they've still got a shitload of tickets left, they'll sell them for £10. Hopefully we'll get to the point where scalpers are sitting on 30 consoles each and then can't get rid of them and then have to sell them for less than face value because the likes of Sainsbury's, Asda, Tesco are in the mix to try and sell them rather than it's just being Curry's. And I can't, I've got consoles before from the likes of Asda and Tesco and things like that. It's mm-hmm. not just going to the game and it's not just going to your local curries or pc world or something like that it's just at this moment in time because there's so few of them the likes of the home shopping retailers aren't able to do that so it will get to a point at some time where production is that fast that they can get them around to everywhere in the world it's just not at that point yet which is obviously frustrating so there will become a point where people are sat on them people aren't willing to spend 815 pound and in, in fact, it will end up coming down to probably less than face value because the Saturn room people don't want to buy from these scruffy bastards. <laughs> that's that's how we have to legally refer to them, by the way. It's written in the uh, Anti-Scalping Act, um, published under the ICU amendments of 2021, by the way. Um, they are scruffy bastards. So that's how you refer to scalpers now, <laughs> scruffy bastards. Um, uh, okay, let's jump back through. Let's, let's get comments. I will probably have to skip across because there is quite a lot um uh, da, 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 da. uh the key message here would be don't buy from scalpers it would instantly shut down that market but sadly desperation takes over for so many absolutely supply and demand get rid of the demand they're stuck with a supply that they can't sell they have to drop the prices in essence they may even have to up, like lower the prices to get rid of them if the market is saturated or there is no demand and that will instantly stop it i predicted yesterday that when we start to see the market become increasingly saturated, I mean, that's not the right word because saturated means full already, but going towards saturation, prices will drop. Scalpers will still be getting them until it's not feasible, but rather than selling for 800, they start selling for seven, 650, five. Okay, it's not even worth it anymore. I'm not gonna bother, not worth the risk. Let's just get rid. Um, I think we'll start to see that kind of thing happen. Maybe it won't be that steady. Maybe it'll drop pretty quickly. Once, as soon as they see that the demand is dropping off, they might just go, okay, well, let's just go mm. back, go back to trainers or whatever it was that Birdbot was initially set up for. Um, complete global saturation. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, we need we need that to happen. The easiest way for that to happen is to is to just go <laughs> shitloads of stock. Yeah, that in pandemic time is probably going to be difficult, and that in just a general world, it may be difficult we've never had this many eyes on the console launch this much the ps4 launch was difficult i remember we gave a console away we gave a console of choice away you could choose to get an xbox one um or a playstation 4 uh, and we did a social campaign somebody won and we gave them the console he chose a ps4 which we were good about because it's like fuck <laughs> they're not in stock so we had to kind of like wait a month to get this guy's console and we gave it to him um which was which was fine but it was like a month ish after we're like months after and after mm. christmas and we still can't get hold of stock that is because of a couple of things obviously pandemic making it a bit more difficult for manufacturing for logistical reasons for shipping getting them all in pandemic for the logistic uh, logistical reasons of getting them all out into stores and doing the delivery uh, stuff like that but also pandemic throttling those distribution lines the in-store pickup you could just wander into uh, stores and pick up a oh, console. Oh, nice. I'll take that. I didn't even know there was going to be one, which is what happened with me with my yeah. PS4. It was like a week into it, they were still pretty hard to get, and it was in Sainsbury's. So I just grabbed it. Okay, yoink. I mean, I've never ever in my wildest dreams thought I was going to buy a console from Sainsbury's. Not that I was against it, I just didn't think it would happen. <laughs> That's where I got my first yeah. PS4. Um, so, but all those avenues are gone, which exacerbates it. And then you add to that the, the idea that online systems have developed for people to make seedy underhanded business through touting or scalping consoles then yeah we're in a shit situation i do feel sorry for game and i do feel sorry for john lewis and everyone else game is an easy target because they made a statement on it um so yeah they are getting uh, the boot stuck in but everyone should be getting the boot stuck in um because yeah <laughs> If the supply doesn't change, the system should change. Box.co.uk is the only one. I've had no success with it at all, but it's the only one that I've seen that every one of their stock uh, 
influxers, they put a ballot on. Enter your email address and you find out whether it's worth you wasting your time for um, joining a queue. Which that means, yeah, everyone's going to be a little bit disappointed because they didn't get the email. But rather than 99% of users being very disappointed that they've wasted an hour and a half, the way that they do it is so much better. There's probably better ways of doing it, but that's that's I think that is a minimum for me uh, of where I'd like to see it. Big question is, did Ed Sutton get one? Says Mr. T. Oh, I don't know. I don't know the context of this. I don't know the context of this. What was he? Was he pissed? I don't. He's it, it, human. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> obviously, he's it, 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 in a bracket with everybody else. But else, but he's been tweeting <laughs> PlayStation. I mean, as if it's their fault. Um, that yeah, I don't. I don't understand it. He, he, he's in the same situation as everybody else, but he's he is fuming. He must be the most fuming person I've seen on social media, anyway. Uh, eternally, see, that's a very good comment. Um, saying, but we the people pissed off with scalping can make uh, that situation happen. Flood the market with similar listings and bid stupid numbers on the scalpers' listings. The issue there, though, is that <laughs> it's selfishness. Do you have to pay when you bid for something on eBay? Um, Fair enough if you don't want it. But if I was to see a listing like that, I could say, I want to buy this for £2,000. Or we just keep on bidding it. And then I'd end up winning the bid. Can I then just back out of the bid? Um, I I don't know. As far as I'm aware, you can't. Or you can, but you get negative feedback. Um, or you get a non-paying bidder warning. Yeah, see, that's the thing. A lot It's people are putting their reputations on the line. I mean, if you create a new account, can you then bid without having payment details in? But then it's the, the, the legwork of people having to go and create new accounts. And people don't want to go out of their way to help other people that they don't know, which is very selfish. Um, but unfortunately, that crowd mentality... In an ideal world, we, everyone would do that. And jobs are good. But in an ideal world, we wouldn't need to do that either because we just say, don't buy them. All right, yeah, okay. Um, so it then rests on the shoulders of, of a few that would go and do that, and then the few won't do that on the benefit uh, for the benefit of the many who can't be asked either. So it becomes a difficult situation. It, it would be it would be a good thing to do. Um, right, you can have up to ten of them before eBay take action. Interesting. Uh, it's a contract when you win the auction on eBay. There you go. Let's all just create um, fu scalper one um, and two and three or whatever on eBay, <laughs> and then just buy all of them. Get ten each. Jobs are good in. Um, hope the restocks are never manufactured. A uh, newer manufactured models. I can't put mine into rest mode without it having to repair itself. Have you not had any updates? I had that once, and I haven't had it since. Um, apparently, like the update that came in like day three or something should have sorted that, and I, I've not had it since then. Um, and I keep mine in rest mode most of the time so that I can turn it on with my mobile mm -hmm. when I'm lying in bed and think, oh, let's just do some. Some my club spins. I've not done the new agents this week, so let's have a go, Bush, kind of thing like that. Um, uh, yes, it was Curry, says Mr. T. Uh, let's let's create Skynet and eliminate bots. Not sure it'll work out for us long term. <laughs> uh, we've got all Terminator in here. Nice. Uh, Lake says, let's put John Connor to get rid of the bots first. <laughs> yeah, I'll send Arnie around. Mr. Scarpa. Yes. <laughs> get out of here. Um, uh, Precision, to quote Kevin Keegan, I would love it if game brought in like 100,000 consoles and the scalpers, uh, scalpers, oh, scrolled off screen. Oh, I've lost it. No. Uh, and the scalpers looking to get lots of money ended up massively out of pocket. That would be incredible. Um, Gary says, let's be honest, scalping is always going to happen and it will not only stop if it becomes illegal. If it says, if it stays legal, there is always a way around scalpers getting what they want. Lottery system, question mark, they can still use a bot. Uh, name down on a list, question mark, they can still use a bot. Waiting for a website to have stock, question mark, they can still use a bot. Yeah, all exploitable to some extent. I mean, if it, if it becomes names on lists, do is that when we start to see scalpers selling email verification lists? If you want one, I've got 200 accounts that I can sign up for, which increases the chances. If you want to use my 200 accounts, it'll cost you 20 quid or whatever. And when you get one, um, I'll give you a tenner back or something along those lines or whatever. Um, you can see scalpers doing that sort of thing. Shit, I've probably just given them an idea. No. So all exploitable, definitely. Yeah. It's just a matter of... Um, is it a little better? Is it is it a step towards that perfection? I did see a comment from... Uh, uh, oh, there was, a, there was a comment that made me chuckle from Swash earlier on. I can't see it. 
I can't see it. I can't find it. It's gone. No, no. Um. Anyway, anyway. So there you go. PS fives. Are there in the wild? Do you know what? I'm going to click on this appliances online one. Let's refresh the page and see uh, and see what happens. Nope, still uh, really popular. So we are seeing things like this. Um, high demand. Uh, sorry, this one's really popular. We've had to pause new orders to make sure we don't sell more than we have. Unfortunately, we don't know when it will be available again. So please keep checking this page. Basically, there's a shitload of people now just refreshing this page until it goes back live again. I did put a horrendously long link in the chat. It was uh, very early on in the screen, though, uh, in the stream, though, so it may have gone. If you do want it, though, I can share it. But um, yeah, it doesn't. What's that? I said it'll cost you twenty quid if you need if you need to share it. No, it won't cost you twenty quid. You got a profit somewhere. No, I'm, I'm, there's no way I'm charging them twenty quid for that link. It'll be sixty pound for the first six months <laughs> with a monthly then fee of twenty quid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Um, uh, hope the restocks are new. Oh, I've read that one. Uh, yeah, fully patched. Maybe I've got a dodgy system. Potentially, potentially. Uh, Vern says, "Right, guys, I'm going to dip off to pick up my PS5." Hey, he, he, he sold hey. that. By the way. If you want to, if you want a PS5, you could use Vernsbots.com, um, which is, I mean, he's, he's got us all. Pit. No, I'm joking. Vern um, was one of the lucky guys and picked up someone else's pre-order that they didn't want, so he bought from mates of mates. So, geez, nice, nice. Enjoy, enjoy. Um, this will continue until summer at least. That or whenever pandemic situation starts to get better. Yeah, <laughs> the only thing that I could see changing it sooner is. A backlog. Like let's say we lost two or three months production time pre Christmas, which meant that we're kind of everything that we have now was rushed and stretched and probably sent over let's use potentially flawed analogies, like half full containers. They should have been full, but we'll send half full just to get them there. So there's something out. Maybe it's not happened exactly that way. But maybe the full containers are actually now coming over and maybe we could get a, a huge boom. So there's so many that the scalpers just can't get involved or whatever. And then maybe at that point we could get involved and everyone could pick them up and they'll be in stores. And in March, um, we can go back into stores and they're, they're on the shelves in Tesco and stuff, stuff like that. Suddenly it becomes, okay, scalpers, I can literally see them physically in multiple shops. It's not worth me buying it. That could change it sooner. But do you know what? If we don't get that... I think you're fully right. Summer, at least. I, uh, yeah, I agree. I love how AO just called the PS5 one terabyte white. Yeah, not the fact that it's a disc edition. Not the fact that it's 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 actually not one terabyte. It's like 895 gigabytes or whatever it is. So yeah, yeah, nice. We don't know. We sell fridges, so it's white. <laughs> Ta-da. Um, Gagaz says, "You think scalpers watch this channel? Didn't they? Didn't think they had such good taste." <laughs> I know. <laughs> we like you, Gagaz. You can stay. You can stay. Nice. Um, anyway, let's move forward. Um, we've spoken about PS5s enough. So let's move on to something completely different now. And let's talk about uh, PS5 faceplates. <laughs> nice. Uh, this is written by Andy Robinson at VGC and says, The PS5 yeah. faceplate seller uh, threatened by Sony returns and claims it's now untouchable. We didn't know before. Now we do. Um, so a peripheral company forced to stop selling custom PS5 faceplates has returned under a brand, uh, new brand name and claimed it's now untouchable. CMP Shells launched on Monday and is now selling black shells for PlayStation 5 Disc Edition consoles. The shells cost $49.99 and will ship in February, the company claims. CMP is the latest iteration of the company first known as PlayStation 5, which was then forced to rebrand uh, re as CustomizeMyPlates.com in October before finally pulling its planned range of custom PS5 faceplates entirely due to the alleged threat of legal action from Sony. In its new listing for the black console shells, CMP addresses the issue of potential legal action directly. The company suggests that it's now wiser to what it can legally get away with and claims that it has a patent pending uh, for the shells. The patent is pending and all sales finalised before it's approved are untouchable, the company said. We didn't know before, now we do. It added, uh, further, uh, we have not replicated anyone's proprietary design. Our shells improve upon the original by allowing for more ventilation. We will be able to sell even after uh, the patent is approved. Um, CMP says it will be making 1,000 shells for its initial batch and claims it sold double that amount in 24 hours during its previous life as customised my place. In its previous form, the company, uh, the company claimed it was working with manufacturers in the UK and China to create the first place, which it said were made from pre
premium industry standard plastic based on the PS5's officially released dimensions. It also tweeted real images of the faceplates. Curiously, uh, CMP says that every PS5 shell will include a free Ragnarok decal based on the upcoming sequel to God of War. There's no mention in the listing of how it's avoided, uh, avoided Sony's ire with this inclusion. Since, customi uh, since CustomizeMyPlates.com pulled its PS5 faceplate orders, several other third-party peripheral companies have launched their own range of console shells. Canadian uh, peripheral firm Dbrand recently announced it would soon be taking orders for its own range of black PS5 faceplates and dismissed suggestions Sony could stop it. Uh, we'll leave it there. Customize my plates or CMP is back. Thoughts, Bib? Yeah. Well, the, the the next line underneath it says, "Asked by a Reddit user if it feared similar legal actions, customize my plates." D brand dismissed the notion, writing, "We encourage them to try." A caption on its Reddit post also read, "Sue was Sony." Yeah, yeah. What do they know now that they didn't know before? And if they wasn't that shit scared, why did they not go back to the name "Customize My Plate"? Well, um. D brand is a different one. So them saying uh, Sue was Sony, that was. Uh, were you here for that one, or was that one that I covered when you were off? Um, uh, pass. Well, D brand is a mobile phone case uh, slash skin slash protective screen uh, manufacturer uh, seller that has a really. How how can you say it? Um, I don't want to say ego, but that sort of like sue me. Uh, that that water off a duck's back sort of mentality on their social media. A lot of people like them just for their social media. They don't take two. They don't give two fucks. They don't take no shit, and they put that in their social content. That's their tone of voice. Um, mm. So them saying Sue Sony is not actually a legal threat to Sony. It's it's just a ah, this is us just being cool. Yeah, this is how we do the thing. But it's a decent brand. Their social stuff is actually really good. Um, so they they confirmed a week or two ago that they were going to start doing it, which maybe that has what has spun CMP back into action. Maybe they've gone off, started to ask, ask legal questions, sought proper counsel, and then looked at how Dbrand have got around making things themselves. And maybe that has spun them back into action. That's my initial thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Fair play to them. Uh, they've obviously found out what they can do. They've obviously been speaking. There's so many of these different distributors now and producers of these shells that clearly they're either all in cahoots with each other they're all speaking to each other and how they can get away with this and go against sony so it's not just sony going after one brand they all kind of know the ins and outs of how they can get around this but i mean fair play to them i mean it's obviously going to be a big business for them i th i don't do when do i think that sony had this under their sleeve for a while i don't think they would have probably brought them out as soon as they're probably looking at doing now because of the other people around the place that are looking to try and sell these but, uh, yeah, I mean, go for it. There's, I think it's definitely a good thing. I just want to see more inspiring shells because the ones that we're getting at the moment are like camouflage, black, blue, night sky. You know what I mean? I want to see some inspiring ones. Obviously, they're trying to stay away from the copyright stuff. So the one that I always refer back to was the Miles Morales one, which looked unbelievable. Um, obviously, they're trying to stay away from that stuff because that really is just infringing on uh, copyright material. But... Yeah, I, I, fair play to them. They clearly know something that we don't. Let's go for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not surprised that they are back. Uh, the fact that they've put little things in, like, oh, we offer ventilation. Okay, well, that's a different product. It's not just a reskin. If you're selling the exact same faceplate, the exact same size and stuff like that, you're making yourself open something. You sell a different piece of plastic that has vent holes in it. It's a different product. I mean, if they're putting it on their PS5, they could do what they want. It doesn't say anywhere. It's a CMP. It's a shell. Uh uh, it's a CMP shell, not not a PS5 first play. I mean, if you think that, then that's on you. And and yeah, it, yeah, it's it's that sort of thing. I mean, the fact that they've created new channels is probably a step away from that because one of their issues was probably the fact that they uh, one of the biggest things in terms of brand copyright laws is trying to use someone else's brand as your own, trying to pass yourself off as something official. That is one of the biggest no-nos in copyright laws. And by calling yourself faceplate or uh, plate station five, um, that's just super close. It's exactly what they, they, it's, oh, this is for your PlayStation 5. You're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say that. We spoke previously about how PlayStation Power and magazines like that had to change their name because it had PlayStation Power in the title. You can't have the word PlayStation. It sounds like it's an official thing. You have to get rid of it. Change to Power Station, which is a different thing. Um, that sort of thing. If you use the brand super closely, okay, 
that's bad. So having a social media channel and a website that was built using play, PlayStation 5, I did look at it the other day, I was like, well, you've got PlayStation 5 or Customize My Plates, mm-hmm. and you're telling people to go and follow a different account, CMP. Yeah. Why not just use that account? But then I'm thinking, oh, maybe that's it. Maybe that's part of the legal threat. That channel was established using that... Um, that what's the word duping people into believing that it's, it's legit they weren't but some people would believe that it was a legit sort yeah. of thing so by using different socials that's probably the separation that they need um i do want to stop for a second though because i've just seen uh, swoosh's comment saying bastards i spent ages typing that and you changed subject <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's jump back up we haven't changed too far so let's have a look spoken to one of my suppliers at work uh, that manufacture lighting goods their stuff comes from china uh, the CNY, then the virus, uh, so Chinese New Year, then the virus, then the lockdown over there meant factory workers had to look for other employment. Now uh, that they're getting back to normal, they're still running on 50% staff levels because the old factory workers aren't going back. Then you've got the fiasco in the ports. My supplier had 20 million worth of stock sat on a boat in Southampton waiting to clear customers. Brexit! Yeah! Oh, fuck. Um... Yeah, disaster. Uh, thank you very much for writing the essay, though. I mean, mate, we've, we've finished on that story about six hours ago, but yeah, well, thank you. For, I'm joking, I'm joking. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, all of that, all of that kind of comes into it. Um, there's so many things back to back. I mean, I'd not even considered uh, Chinese New Year um, and then obviously the lockdowns and stuff. I mean, I considered the lockdowns and then the... Uh, uh, transport issues um and and the logistics issues of not being in europe and and seeing trucks parked all the way up motorways uh for days um so all of that will slow things down i've seen it with el gato um posted a message out the other day saying content creators uh, you will be receiving parcels this week that you should have received for christmas <laughs> so you've probably seen your content creators that you follow posting el gato christmas socks because that was held up at Southampton because it was stuck in a Brexit sort of uh, queue. So all of that is impacting it, which is an absolute shit show. So yeah, we can't mm-hmm. just point the finger at, so uh, coming back to Asim's Devil's Advocate co- uh, comment, we can't just stick the boot into game. There is a lot there um, that that has attributed to it. In the same way, you can't blame anyone for anything over this last year because fucking lockdown has yeah. been, been horrendous for everyone. Um but they could still improve. Um, Just seen something on uh, on Twitter as well. There's a there's a, uh, a a Twitter account called UK PS5 Notify, and it's basically someone who's just found all these scalpers taking taking screenshots of like eBay and then Carnage tweets and stuff like that that have been posting them and at in game saying these are the, the these are the guys that are doing it. Can you do something about it? And game have blocked them. What game have blocked UK PS5 Notify? Yeah, saying shooting the messenger, cheers game, and it's like a, a four page thread, like a four tweet thread, and at the bottom it's just a picture of game saying that they've blocked him. Just put nice one shoot, shooting the messenger. So I don't know whether or not game I'd just looking to try and block all of the notify, like IGN deals notify, PS five notify and all the other notification Twitter pages just so that they can try and help it, but I don't know. It uh, it, it, it looks weird. It's probably knowing people manning social media accounts at the front line and having to deal with shit it's probably game and their social team have maybe taken that as not someone trying to be a messenger but someone trying to repeatedly stick the boot in so they've probably seen it as you're attacking us you're pointing this shit out you're saying we're not good enough and and then blocked it that way so i've given them the benefit of the doubt for that that Mm -hmm. said you if if that's someone that's trying to help without seeing these tweets obviously i'll just have to take take the context of it's Vicky Blake that's retweeted it and just put bad optics here. Yeah, absolutely. It was a little bit uh, Yeah, I mean, so I'm essentially the same thing. So without seeing the tweets and taking what you said as gospel th- that this count is trying to help, um, then even if you are deeming that to be negative, you have mm. to read past the words. You have to read the story. You as a social media account cannot just bury your head in the sand and go fuck off. I'm, I'm not listening to you. You can't do that. That's that's super bad. That's super bad. So yeah, <laughs> no, no, sorry out. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I've I've run social media accounts and I've had people uh, chatting shit and I've had people trying to be helpful and being a nuisance. It, it does happen. But you, as a social media person, need to see the story, see the issue, and see yeah. beyond that. It's not always easy, and it's not always something that 
will do, and we all make mistakes. Um, so yeah, game un unblock that account. Just do yourself a favor, cause, yeah, come on. I mean, it's just, just gonna make us make another scoop about you tomorrow. God's sake, we'll have to change it from the cyber <laughs> scoop to the uh, uh, ice cream scoop game upload scoop game. <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, the where was Gary's comment? Uh, the first plates all look a little. Uh, Two player control from the car boot sale, uh, third party as fuck. Yeah, they do, they do. Some of them, some of them look okay. I mean, the D brand stuff looked looked a little bit better, but when I see mock up images, mock up images doesn't have proper textures and stuff. Uh, so yeah, unless I see an actual photo, not interested. I want to see IRL pictures of it. I want to see people that have had them and got them and can verify it before I will even consider buying it but then gary's other comment that says i'm actually offended that they're charging 50 quid for two bits of bloody plastic probably 30 pounds shipping on top as well alongside a lovely custom charge yeah 100 pounds for a bit of plastic nope um has anyone had to deal with com uh, commodity codes and country of origin details since brexit <laughs> i don't even know what that means <laughs> no <laughs> is the answer here i've not left my house mate you know what i mean i have no idea uh is game social media still outsourced um i don't know i know that it used to be in internally um because i used to know a lot of the social guys but a lot of them have since moved on i don't know if it is still internal or outsourced anymore um so i'm not sure um but yeah hopefully i mean they will be having a shit show let's jump back into uh, game and now rather than attacking them let's stop people attacking them for a second um the other side of the fence is that that is some questionable business decisions but game has a history of questionable business decisions game also has some really incredible people that work there i know some people that work there that i really really like in different departments um and they will be having a fucking horrendous time anyone that works in the game social stuff will be having a shit show over time and that is not their fault um mm -hmm. in the same way that I, w I will say the same thing about any other social channels that i've worked on the people running the social accounts and the social channels that i don't work on people running the social account uh, accounts on big businesses aren't the people making the decisions that are pissing you off they're just the ones that are speaking to you so don't be a dick to them. Uh, just in the same way, we, we can have a discussion here about game and the business, but we're not going to go and attack them. Uh, people will be doing that, which is a shit show. So again, you can give them sympathy. You can give their, their employees sympathy while still being critical of the decisions. Sadly, people out there, or you're saying this, sadly, people out there, sadly, people out there are buying consoles that they shouldn't be from scalpers, but sadly, some people out there are just aggressive knobheads. So game will probably be having a shit week on all fronts. Um... Uh, West, hey, good morning, good morning, how's things, how's things, um, although morning-ish is probably closer, hey, <laughs> yeah. uh, copying the example set by ICU, uh, I'm now late to 90% of meetings, but it's okay, as I, as I say, ish, <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, quality, uh, there is a company that is now selling front slash bottom section face plates for the dual sense, as in the stand, the dock thing, because I've seen those on eBay, I've seen like, some horrendous looking eBay stands that have got like vent holes and stuff. And yeah. Uh, all I'm saying, says Mr. T, is I'm looking forward to the new Jingle All the Way movie next year based on trying to get a PS5 instead of a Turbo Man doll. <laughs> that would yes. be amazing. Can you imagine? I mean, it's got it's going to be Chris Hemsworth, isn't it? He's slowly turning into the new Arnie, having like Netflix deals for action films and stuff. So yeah, it'll be a Netflix exclusive. Chris Hemsworth trying to buy a PS5. Although, Sony have absolutely sued the shit out of PlayStation 5, so he's not going to be buying a PS5. It's going to be like a, a Toy Station 6 or something like that. Get the new Toy <laughs> Station 6. Um, yeah, from Wish. <laughs> no, the black-looking plastic section around the analog sticks. Oh, on the controllers, do you mean? Uh, let me look at it. Oh, for the dual sense. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I don't have i don't think i have anything dual sense ish here i've got just other ps i have boxes. dual sense ish yeah hold it up so the black bit on the dual sense controller as modeled by bibby can now be replaced apparently interesting interesting um it's scalping all the way <laughs> 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 gg gg yes. thank you for the yes. ice cream appreciate that <laughs> See, there we go. 
Asim Tanvi uh, is there with the uh, script writing. Uh, I'll come in with a little bit of branding, and then Blue Boy comes in with the outward marketing. There we go. We've got it fixed. <laughs> We've got it fixed. If anyone wants to jump in on this production, you can do. You can join our Discord for sixty pounds up front, and then twenty pounds a month, like any other scalp. Uh, not scalping. I didn't say scalping. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, enough about PS Fives. We've spoken about it for a good hour now. So let's sit, sit it. Let's move that on. Pirate. Uh, Oh, I was waiting for it to see if it was going to do text-to-speech, but it didn't. So, yes, anyway, thank you very much for the 100 bits. Good morning. Hey. You beautiful, man. You Good beautiful, morning. man. Um, I've got, go? got the pitch ready for all the movie studios. You got them right. Uh, oh, uh, here we go. In response to that final comment before we do move on, these are the uh, custom-coloured faceplates for your uh, controllers. Oh, coupon code for me. Nice. Get out. <coughs> so I can choose different colours. Let's go for silver. They just that nah, it's not for me. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> that's not for me. They don't look, they don't look as good as I want them to be. Let's put it that way. They're definitely just like a cheap three D print in that armor. Yeah, it's. I mean, what was the comment they said uh, about faceplates as well? Uh, uh, the faceplates look a little. Um, two-player controller from the car boot sale yeah that's kind of what it looks like for me uh let's leave them alone let's leave them alone anyway uh, next article rust uh, smashes twitch and steam peak users record this is written by vg247's alex calvin and says follows some big name streamers playing the former early access game Face Punch's Rust has hit new records for users on both Steam and streaming platform Twitch. As spotted by PC Games N, Steam chart shows that the game hit 244,394 concurrent users on Steam. This record was actually hit at 9pm GMT on Saturday, January the 16th. At the time of writing, Rust actually boasts the fourth highest concurrent player figure on Steam, coming in behind Valve's own Counter-Strike Global Offensive and Dota 2, as well as Battle Royale hit Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Yeah, this comes in the wake of uh, Twitch streams about the survival game. You uh, appreciate that. I saw you smile then. Yeah. Uh, this comes in the wake of Twitch streams about the survival game, uh, survival game being watched by, uh, I'll just say, 1.3 million people earlier this month on January the 8th, according to Sully Gnome. Rust has seen a surge of popularity in the last few weeks thanks to a bunch of streamers including Shroud, XQC and Myth playing the game on the offline TV server. Uh, this has also resulted in the game becoming one of the best-selling items on Steam, even topping the Steam Top 10 for the last two weeks. Face Punch originally last, uh, launched Rust into Steam Early Access in 2013, with uh, 1.0 version rolling out at the start of 2018. At XO 19, Face Punch revealed that Rust was coming to PS4 and Xbox One, with a 2020 release date in mind. Obviously, we're past that now, but it seems that the game is still on track to come to console this year and has been rated by the ESRB. Big thoughts. Yeah, I never thought like this is this is uh, I've mentioned this before. This is Alistair's favorite game, like of all time, and he used to come in and just talk waffle on about what he did on Rust last night, and I was like taking it with a pinch. So I was like, it doesn't look like the kind of game for me. However, the more I look at it, I think I've been sleeping on this for a while. <laughs> it looks amazing. It looks brilliant. Does it deserve everything that all the concurrent viewers that is possibly getting this moment in time? Yes, I, have, I fully agree. I think it's started to build an environment. I think this is everything that Daisy wanted to be. And unfortunately, Daisy is nowhere close to being. Um, but it is, it, it is doing things that I didn't think it would be possible doing. For a game that came out in early access in 2013, it just shows that time, uh, games over time can absolutely evolve and become the games that you potentially want them to be or even exceed expectations. This is oh, hopefully like a a success story that the likes of uh, Fallout 76 have started to come here, No Man's Sky, uh, Sea of Thieves, and hopefully Cyberpunk will become this thing just because it's come out and it's not in the, the, the best of states. It can potentially get bigger and bigger and better and better and exceed all expectations. So, yeah, this is massive props to that. I mean, it, it massively helps when you get the likes of Shroud and Summit uh, all jumping onto the game who can easily have 60,000 people watching at any given time. Um, so, yeah, the, the marketing's been on point. The, the right people are playing it. It just shows how influential influencers can be, um, especially when they have a like-minded community that watch them. I absolutely 
I can hand on heart say that the likes of those influencers have given this game a new lease of life and a new player base that's come to play this game. Um, I mean, the article does mention Shroud, XQC, and Myth. Um, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. Choco Taco is the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's actually been playing it for about about two months. It's pretty much been his main game. He's kind of gone away from PUBG and been playing Rust. Um, and he's inspired everyone else. So there. I mean, probably not factual. He probably didn't inspire everyone else. But he's a big streamer. He plays it. And he's a... yeah, anyway. Um, it's probably not for me. If it's if it's what I think it is, it's too... I, I say what I think it is. I haven't paid that much attention to Rust. I've seen, like, Choco Taco playing PUBG and then left the room and come back in and they switched over to Rust. I think it's Rust. Is Rust the one where you're, like, chopping down trees and you get, like, a, an X appear on it and you hit the X and then you move to a different bit and you hit the X to, to like... Um, craft uh, to get resources for crafting and stuff like that if it is nah, that's too much that's too much like a, a survival slash simmy stuff for me that is probably not gonna grab my attention the same way that tarkov was a was can like pubg but too much down that way that said um gg I mean, you can't just go from releasing a game in 2013 to being one of the top games on charts on twitch and steam in 2021 eight years mm. later without doing something right and i love to see these i don't want to say rags to riches or um second chance sort of stories i don't want to see because uh, it's not necessarily like it's done something particularly wrong but they've done they've just done right by themselves and their community and they've put the right content in the game and they've seen the game have a resurgence um love to see these kind of stories of of that no man's sky something not quite what we wanted and then comes back this one okay it was all right not not ex not ex exceptional it was good there's loads of stories about people playing rust and there was meme content coming out of that but then it kind of died off but to come back gg i like to see that i love to see that kind of thing um uh uh, uh, uh Eternal Lee says, thanks for the free advertising, chaps. You are welcome. Uh, just want to point out that this podcast is sponsored by Eternal Lee HD. In the, it's not really, but there you go. <laughs> uh, could do with some polishing. Um, well, that was the console bit. Or are, you, are we making banters here? Rust. Ah, that's what it was, banter. That's what it was. I get it now. Got there. Uh, nice. Uh, Mr. T says, uh, I, I, I could I say you could, uh, I guess you could say Rust has not decayed over time. <laughs> um <laughs> Rust, that's not going to age over time. Okay, all right, we're all we get it now. It's fine. <laughs> uh, I wonder if the Rust Among Us mod uh, has had an effect as well, given the likes of Vanos playing it on YouTube. I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't know Among Us had a Rust mod. So there you go. I mean, it could, it could do, it could do, it could do. Um, but yeah, nice to see it come back. Okay, I'm going to lean into a game that I like uh, and spoke about yesterday, but I. I'm not convinced about PUBG's long-term direction. The, the The company has changed from being a community-led project, so therefore delivered exactly what the community wanted, to a corporate project, um, which has a lot of monetization stuff. Long-term, I genuinely don't know if PUBG is going to be where I want it to be. Rust shows you that if businesses do it right long-term, they can have projects drop off uh, onto the back burner and then come back to the fore again loud and proud. PUBG could do that, but they need to use Rust as an example of delivering properly, delivering the content that consumers want, not games that are going to earn your investors a shitload of money. That's my thoughts. Anyway, uh, but that's enough PUBG. Final story of the day. Um, I, <laughs> I bet the Rust mod is called WD-40. <laughs> See, there we go. Thinking outside the box. I like that one. I like that one. Um... Final article, Alex Calvin at VG247 says, New Sony San Diego team working on existing PlayStation IP. Uh, rumors point to studio handling next Uncharted title. All right, someone check on Gary Clark. Make sure his hands are firmly in his pockets. Actually, out of his pockets. Nowhere near his waistline. <laughs> Gary, chill out. Um, it seems there's a new team at Sony San Diego <laughs> studio. Uh, tasked with working on existing PlayStation franchises. Uh, that's according to LinkedIn profiles for the developer's former boss, Michael Mumbauer, as spotted by Reset Era, which says he helped create a brand new 
all-star team to work on AAA action-adventure titles. This is seemingly separate from the already existing Sony San Diego team responsible for MLB The Show. The creation of this new studio doesn't seem to be particularly new. In the featured section on his profile, Mumbauer links back to a number of videos, including one from YouTuber Robin Gaming with the headline, Sony is secretly building a new PlayStation studio to make Uncharted 5! Question mark, exclamation mark. Uh... The section is curated by the LinkedIn account holder, so this is likely an intentional move by Mumbauer, but could also be the former San Diego studio chief messing with people reading his profile. All of which is to say that this is far from official confirmation. Mumbauer headed up Sony San Diego between 2007 and 2020, also holding a senior director for visual arts at PlayStation Worldwide Studios. There's no word on where he has moved to since leaving the company last November. The last entry in the Uncharted series is 2017's The Lost Legacy. Wow, as if that's four years ago. Anyway, it's not clear how involved Naughty Dog is going to be in the game's creation. The studio, of course, has been busy working on this uh, on last year's The Last of Us Part Two. Uh, that long in development on chart film is also set to launch this year with Spider-Man actor Tom Holland in the lead role. Bib, as a man that absolutely mm. loves Uncharted games and plays them all the time, thoughts? Well, I'm going to throw this instantly back to you, Graham, because I never even finished the last one. I've not. I mean, I think I've said it multiple times, and I think I played the first one and then the one on PS Vita and then I've never played one since. I've got them all because they've been given away on PlayStation Plus. However, I don't know how the, the story of the last... I don't know whether or not that's spoiler territory that you want to tell people. I mean, it's probably been out for a while now, but, like, is there room for a new one? Is um, it going to be a spin-off? I would. If I if I was going to do something Last of Us-ish... Uh, Manny! Hey! Not the Legends. It absolutely hey. is the Legends. Yes. Afternoon, Shagger. Welcome in. Welcome in. Um... If I was going to touch Uncharted, I wouldn't touch the story that's there. Uh, mm. I, f I feel that was good. I feel it was complete enough. I would... I mean, there's definitely stuff in the universe that you can do. And you could definitely maybe do spin-off stuff. You could you could use the characters in different ways. I would I would try to be careful, though, with, with, my, mm -hmm. with that. Just because I enjoy it so much. That said, characters that are so good, you could do so much more with them. So... It could be it could be exceptional in in one of many ways. It could be incredibly bad. Um, so I, yeah, yeah, I would like to see something else from the Uncharted universe. I feel there's uh, a lot that we could do with characters there that we could see those in different time zones and and things. The new Uncharted film it give is doing that in itself by giving you Nathan Drake, but giving you Nathan Drake as as a young guy, Tom Holland age, as opposed to um, Nolan North's Nathan Drake as a man that's like thirties kind of thing, uh, late twenties, mm. early thirties. So we could see Young Drake. We could have that sort of stuff in there. The the James Bond Casino Royale go back to the roots and see how it started sort of stuff. There's definitely space for that. If the films are doing it, the games could kind of do that. Mm -hmm. um, would like to see it, but... but is, is there any other prominent characters apart from Nathan Drake that they could make a spin-off for? I mean, again, they could have already done that and I've got no idea because, again, my interest in Uncharted don't really have one, but is there room for somebody else in that franchise to potentially have their own spin-off? Uh, well, they kind of have already. So they had the Unchart Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which has two characters called Chloe and Nadine, um, which were uh, characters from within... Uh, well, they were in Uncharted 4. I think Chloe, was she in 2? I can't remember. I can't remember which one it is. All the game's kind of blurring into me now. Anyway, characters from within the series that they got their own spin-off and <laughs> used those characters within it. So you could use those uh, and develop those for sure i mean sully the character that mark Wahlberg is going to be in the film because he, obviously he was going to be nathan drake and then got so old that he's now sully who sully is basically <laughs> the old guy with the cigar and and the white yeah. the white linen shirt kind of stuff that you usually see in in films like yeah i'm just gonna turn up but but he has a history kind of thing you could see things from sully's perspective that could be something exciting uh, as well which uh, mr Caesar said in the chat um Stream is clean, man. Thank you very much, dude. Thank you very much. Um, uh, yeah, it's just taking a long time. It's taking a long time. Uh, me and Baby sat around a smartphone, you know, just just in Subway, uh, <laughs> meatball marinara each. Yeah, it's just a long way from that. Um, uh, they did one for Nadine. Is that is that Lost Legacy that you're talking about? Um, it was mentioned in that article to uh, where where are we? Where are we? Uh, there we go. Um, so this is linked off. Uncharted, the Lost Legacy launcher. Here to remind you, it's out next week, August uh, 2017. 
there you go. Um, yeah, Chloe forgot her name. Uh, I mean, I didn't thankfully because I have a daughter called Chloe, and there you go. If I'd <laughs> forgotten, them, God damn it, Chloe was two and three. Nadine was a secondary antagonist in four. Um, yeah, see, all, all merged, all merged. Um, I guess you could say this will be uncharted territory for Sony San Diego. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, someone, someone, Jesus Christ! Just drop the hammer on this team now. <laughs> Uncharted is a brilliant series of games. Completed all five home console games on Steam over the uh, on stream over the past few months. Exceptional games. Uh, Uncharted Nathan Drake Collection. One a little tedious, just because it's it's older um, and it's setting things up a little tedious. But if you like the Tomb Raider games, not tedious at all. It probably wasn't tedious actually. Because it was tedious for me, because as I've mentioned many times, my PlayStation 3 died, and I had to replay a lot of that again. 2, 3, and 4, though. Damn. Um, I think I do. I've got, the, I've got the opportunity to be able to play them, so I definitely do need to go and play them, at least just get... See what the buzz is about. Um, as, you, as you say, many times I play a lot of shit games, so I need to at least give one of the biggest franchises out there a good, a good whack. Yeah, well... By the time you get to three and four, um, four in particular, purely because it was a PS4 title, you are sat playing a movie. It's if, you, if you've enjoyed if you've enjoyed playing Valhalla um, from the visual aesthetic and stuff that that gives you. Uncharted. I mean, I've not played Valhalla, so it's probably an unfair comparison. I was going to say Uncharted is better. It's, I don't know. It is. It's just it's it's up there with my best games ever. So, yeah, there we go. Um, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of it. What do you guys think? Can we, can we see a new team that's not Naughty Dog working on existing existing PlayStation IP? Naughty Dog are busy with Last of Us additional content, bringing the multiplayer stuff out. What was the name of that? Did they have a name for that? I can't remember. Plus, obviously, Neil Druckmann um, overseeing the TV. Uh, it was that HBO content. Um, so there is that sort of stuff. Plus the, the film... Are they spread too thin to be working on the game themselves? Would you be happy seeing another studio that isn't Naughty Dog working on an Uncharted front, uh, uh, title? What do you guys think? Let us know quickly before we wrap things up. Uh, went back and played Uncharted 4 recently. Still incredible, says Mr. T. Uh, Eternally says, I played Uncharted 2 over Christmas on the Nathan Drake Collection. That game is still utterly phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I really need to play this series for the first time. It's exceptional, match. If you like single-player story games, the best. Uh, or up there with the best. Um, Sony needs to continue with Uncharted as the brand is too big for them to ignore now. That's the thing. They will do. They will do. It's just a matter of how... Whether they they have... I mean, the thing with Nathan Drake, he's such a good character. Do they continue with Nathan Drake? Or do they believe in their own ability to put Nathan Drake to bed and then develop a different character? I mean, we know that Naughty Dog can create characters. They do it in their sleep across um, Uncharted and The Last of Us. But can they do that again? Um, and what story do they want to tell then? I think that's, that's the, the thing... Can they do it again? Yes, but will Sony want them to? Will Sony want them to keep coming? N Nintendo have survived off of Mario for a million years. Um, obviously, that's not so. They much... have evolved and changed over time. Yeah, yeah, and it's not so much about the story; it's more about the experiences that you go through with them. Whereas Nathan mm. Drake is telling stories as as you go. Is the, is there more stories to be told? Can Sony do that effectively, or will they be worried that they ruin the legacy? Um, uh, from that, no pun intended, which I had lost legacy. But there you go. Um, Sony needs to cut. Oh, we've done that one. Absolutely not. Naughty Dog win flawless victory. <laughs> uh, FIFA or Fortnite? Give me a random player on FIFA to sign. <laughs> Nathan Drake. There you go. There you go. I have that one. Uh, Charlie Austin uh, says West. Uh, thing is, though, four kind of wrapped up Nathan and Elena unless their daughter starts. Um, oh, oh. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you're still here, Manny. I've just got your message. I will I will sort that. And, and Slack's just come to life. No, that's Discord. Never mind. Um, I think Drake's story has been told now. It's time to give someone else a shot in the same universe. I can see that. I can see that. I just started my first PS5 playthrough of Detroit Become Human this week. Phenomenal, subtle improvements to this game. It's like a new experience. It was an incredible experience the first time around. But I'm going to stop there and say thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. It's a, it's, been, it's been busy all the way through. You guys got in nice and early, purely because we were all pissed about PS5s. But you know what? We'll keep you updated <laughs> on how that advances over the next few days. AO apparently having some... Uh, 
today now ish ish uh i'll put the link back in the chat once we get wrapped up just in case you do want to keep your eyes on that amazon still rumored to be having some argos also rumored to be having some amazon just goes live whenever um argos the last time they got their stock it was about four o'clock in the morning so if you're up yeah. and you do graveyard shifts maybe keep your phone in your hand and check amazon and see how you get on with your ps5s you might get, get in early before the scalpers take them all that's all the information we have. We don't really have anything else to say other than that. So thank you very much for being here. Before we disappear, though, a reminder, we are back tonight. Twitch.tv forward slash official insert coin. Um, it would be incredible if you guys could join us there. That's going to be our first stream on insert coins channel, and we'd love it to be a success. So please, please, if you're not doing anything, sat down having your uh, your pie and peas or you're getting ready for the United match or whatever tonight 6 p.m. UK time go to uh, twitch.tv forward slash uh, slash official insert coin and that's where we, we will be streaming um, a way out which is a nice at least visually uncharted-ish game I mean it's a horrible tangent there I apologize but yeah join us for that join us for that before then though babe is there anything that you want to add Yes, of course. If you, you do see any video game knock, news knocking around the social media platform of your choice, then do feel free to get in contact with us. It is at Ice Cream Outloads across all major social media platforms. Second way to get in contact with us is to join our Discord. There is an area on the left-hand side called The Scoop. All we need from you is the URL plus your thoughts and impressions. We will then give you our thoughts and impressions on the very next show, which will be at what time tomorrow, Mr. Graham? Turn him! Ish. ish. <laughs> 10 a.m. ish. We go live at 10 a.m. ish. But we will be live at 6 p.m. Boom. No ish tonight. Well, well maybe. We'll see. We'll see. 6 p.m. Twitch.tv <laughs> forward slash official insert coin. I will see you then. Um, do you know what? Some spoilers as well. Uh, you know, if you want to have a little bit of a sneak peek, I'm going to do a little bit of a technical test on Twitch.tv forward slash official insert coin. So feel free to go there, get your notifications on, and see me in a few. Nice. I'll only be live for a few minutes just doing some testing. But there, you know, shh. Only the guys that are here know. But yeah, twitch.tv forward slash official insert coin tonight at 6pm. Love you lots. Until then, have yourselves a fantastic day. And, Bib, what have you got to do? Uh, as most of the chat has come back to say, you've got to stay frosty-ish. <laughs>